So hi, today we will um, change, uh, we will uh, start a new argument, which is differentiation and integration. And integration. Okay. Okay, so I start by giving uh, a definition of, um, a, of a Vitali covering. So we consider with the note with this uh, italic i uh, a collection of intervals. <coughs> and then we say that i covers um, a set E uh, okay a set E a subset of R of course in the sense of Vitali okay was in Italian mathematician if you have that for any epsilon positive and uh, for any x in E there exists an interval i belonging to this family of intervals such that you have that the point x belongs to i and the length of the interval is less than, uh, than epsilon okay Okay. Okay, then we will prove the lemma of Vitali. So the proof is quite tough, so pay attention. So you have that you have an E, a set E, which is a subset of, uh, of, uh, of R, such that the outer measure of E is finite. So actually, the set need not to be measurable. You can take any set. And then you consider I is a collection, is a Vitali, okay, is a, is a collection of intervals which covers um, E in the Vitali sense, so in that sense. Okay, then the lemma tells you that for any epsilon positive, you can find a finite sequence of intervals disjoint, there exists a finite this joint collection I1 collection I1 I n uh, of intervals of course in our in our class I such that you have that the outer measure of E minus the union of this, uh, this finite union is small, is less than epsilon, okay? Okay, the proof. Okay, so l let me, so without loss of generality, without no loss of generality, we can assume um, uh, that, um, that the intervals 
in the collection are closed in I are closed because in any case we can switch from uh, closing interval to open interval by means of the endpoint which has measure zero, okay? Because you have that uh, the outer measure of E minus So we're starting a new argument, which is uh, about differentiation integration, and I give a definition of Vitali covering. So Vitali covering, you start from a set in R, which is uh, not uh, necessarily measurable. And you say you start by a collection of intervals. You say that this collection covers this set E. Yeah, e. If for any epsilon, you can find um, and for any x in E, you can find an interval in this collection such that x belongs to the interval and the length of the interval is uh, arbitrarily small, okay? Then, now I'm going to prove this lemma, which is it's known under the name of Vitali. And it tells you basically that if you have a Vitali covering, then you can, uh, you can somehow express your set E, which is any set, uh, uh, a set E can be covered almost by means of a finite uh, uh, sequence of, uh, of interval, okay? In this sense here. Okay, so we, we consider O an open set such that we, we saw that there exists this open set O such that, uh, um, okay, O contains E and uh, you have that the measure of O is less than um, the outer measure of V plus epsilon, okay? Uh, okay, the next step is somehow to reduce the Vitali covering of the statement, so to, to modify it, uh, to slightly change, using this, uh, this, uh, this open set O, and I will tell you how we, we modify this, uh, the Vitali covering. So instead of denoting with this capital, uh, this italic I, we will denote with this somehow italic J if you want. Okay, this will be a family, um, the collection of the interval which is in I, such that I is contained in O. Okay, we claim that this is still a Vitali covering for E, so J, is a Vitali covering for E. Okay, so we take, so we have to select a point X in E and some eta, okay, eta plays the role of epsilon of the previous definition, eta positive. Okay, then in particular we have that since O contains uh, E, we have that, um, sorry, X in E, X belongs to O, and hence being O open, we have that there exists some delta positive, such that you have that, you can find delta small so that this open interval is contained in O. Okay, then by definition of Vitali covering, for I, for our starting collection, Okay, what we, we can infer, we have that, there exists this I, 
in I such that you have that X belongs to I and the length of I you can choose this so that the his length is less than the minimum between eta and delta. You can always choose this i, so that this is this is arbitrary small, so you, you can always find this. Okay, so from this. Uh, you have that so you have that I belongs to this modified covering because I is contained in O and is such that you have X belongs to I and the length of i is less than our eta with that we fix at the beginning. So actually, we have that also this slight modification um, leads to the definition of a vitalic covering for e. Okay, within open set. OK, now we want to define uh, our sequence, uh, the sequence of, uh, of interval in the statement of the lemma. So we proceed by induction. So uh, somehow we choose the sequence N of disjoint intervals J by induction. So we have I1 be any interval any interval in J. You can in J, okay? You can choose it in an arbitrary way. And then suppose <coughs> that you choose that I1 and IN have been already choose, chosen. And they are disjoint. And then we define this uh, this quantity Kn in this way. is the supremum of the length of i such that i is belongs to the collection j and such that i intersected with one of the previous with all of the previous uh, uh, <coughs> interval 
is uh, this intersection is, is empty. And here we have i, which goes from 1 to n. OK, now the question is, are we doing the supremum on, on an empty set or not? So the answer is not, <laughs> luckily, but why? So we have two cases. So, so we have two cases. So either you have that the set E, our arbitrary set of the statement, is already contained in this finite union. I so there's nothing to prove. Uh, then the process uh, end, stop. Because, of course, in this case, you have that the outer measure of this is zero. So there's nothing to prove or not. So this is not, is not contained in this union. So we have that E minus um, minus e1 i1 union i n is uh, different from the empty set okay if this is true then we can find an element in this set Okay, uh, so there exists some x which belongs to that set, so belongs to E minus this union, this finite union. Okay, so we, we notice that since uh, this union is a finite union of closed interval, it's still closed, so yeah, since the union, the set that we remove, I is, is closed, then the complement is open, okay? The closed set. Okay. So this is open. So this is means that we can uh, we can find as before a delta positive such that the open interval of radius delta is contained in the set. So x minus delta x plus delta is contained here. So its intersection with this finite union is is indeed empty. OK, now we use again the definition of Vitalik covering. Um, for, uh, f for x and for delta, OK, uh, for x and this delta positive. And what we can infer, we have that. There exists an interval i belonging to this modified collection j. OK, such that x belongs to this interval i. And the length of i is less than delta 
as we have that the interval i is contained in this interval. And so we have that i is contained in O, and so i belongs to the class where we are taking the supremum, to the collection where we, um, we perform the, the supremum, OK? And so we have that Kn is indeed strictly positive. OK, then uh, we can, by definition of supremum, we can, for instance, decide to choose this i n plus 1, the n plus 1 interval in the finite collection. So we can decide choose um, i n plus 1 in j such that the length of i n plus 1 is larger than k n divided by 2. This is possible, OK? And of course, OK, this is, this is my, of course, we have that that i n plus 1, this is just to remind you, intersected the, f the finite collection of the previous n interval is empty, OK? OK, this is, <sighs> OK. OK, now we notice that we constructed, we construct sequence so a sequence of uh, mm, pairwise disjoint interval i n OK, such that what about their, their length? Such that we have that the sum of i of the length of the interval of the length of i i is measure, they are disjoint, no? is the measure of this countable union, and this is less than the measure of the open set. So somehow, this sequence is finite, it's converse. So this then comes an argument that you, we already use. So we are in, pres in presence of a convergent sequence. So, so we, can, we can say that the tail of the sequence goes to 0. OK. <sighs> OK, so okay, the general term Li, uh, Li, I, Lin, maybe so let me use this, um, tends to zero. <sighs> and then we have that also this supremum 
because of this also kn tends to zero as n goes to zero uh, as n goes to infinity okay because of this okay okay this is one fact and then the other one is is about the tail of the sequence of the series Sorry. Um, so we can also say that there exists some index capital N such that the sum on the length of i is small. So I choose this strange fact, epsilon over 5, but then it will be clear why I decide to divide epsilon for 5. OK, now we claim the following. We do this claim, uh, which is indeed the, the thesis that we want. We have that this index n is, uh, is indeed the one that we are looking for. So we have that consider this sequence, finite sequence of, uh, of intervals constructed in a way that I just t told you are such that the outer measure of uh, E minus this finite union is less uh, than epsilon, okay? Okay, now I prove uh, the claim. Okay, let me call for convenience this, uh, this, this set here, R, so we denote by R the difference between E and this finite U. And uh, uh, we take some point x in, in R and let x uh, point in R, OK? Now, somehow we deal as before. So we have that um, So x is in R. So we have that. That there is this some delta positive such that um, the interval x minus delta and x plus delta intersect at this finite, uh, finite union um, is, uh, is empty. Okay. And but then by definition of Vitali covering for x and delta, Uh, there exists an interval i in the collection j such that x belongs to this i and the length and the length of i is less than delta. So in particular, you have that this i is disjoint uh, from this previous n interval. Uh,
Okay, now. Ah. You're lost. No, I mean, I said, no, it's, it's quite tough. <laughs> It's proof. Now this is a claim. Uh, is, is a claim within the the the, the, the whole proof, but <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but once that you okay, if if you want, just erase this claim. It's just to say that you, here we are within the proof, okay, of the Vitali, of the lemma of Vitali, okay. So. Okay, we arrive here. We, okay, we notice that this uh, this uh, series is convergent. From this, we can deduce that the t uh, the tail of the series series is uh, goes to zero. Okay, so you can find uh, some n such that this is true. So you consider this this capital N, which is indeed we want to prove. <laughs> this is why I I, do I I wrote claim. We want to prove that this capital N is indeed the one in uh, in the statement of the Vitali lemma. So we want to prove this. Okay, we want to prove. So it was a somehow a statement <laughs> of uh, of the Vitali lemma. Now we want to prove this. Okay, we are still within the proof of uh, the the lemma of Vitali. We want to prove this. And um, yeah, now I'm going, okay. Uh, <laughs> I know, it's, it's tough, this proof, but. Okay, so um, so we found this interval i, which um, which satisfy this, and we also want to prove that um, we want to prove the following. We have that that i um, intersected. I n is different from the empty set for some n, uh, for some n, which of course must be uh, larger than, than n. Okay. Okay. Why di this is true? In fact, uh, in fact, as, um, assume by contradiction. Assume by contradiction that this is not true. That um, that it is not true. Okay. Then what we have? Uh, then we have. Then okay. We we would have that i intersected i n would be uh, equal to the empty set for any uh, for any n. Okay. Uh, so you have that i would belong to the uh, to the collection to the set where we perform the supremum, okay? To the collection where we perform the supreme. Okay. And <laughs> this is for any n. So we would have that the length of i would be less or equal than kn for any n. But this goes to 0, okay? So we would have that the length of i would be would be zero, okay? And this is uh, this is not possible, okay? Absolutely. Okay, so this is true. Uh, 
Okay, so hence there is this, uh, this n which verifies this. So we consider, uh, just to fix the, the idea, consider n the smallest uh, number, the smallest uh, index uh, that verifies this property P. Okay, so, uh, then since it, it is the smallest, uh, we have that, uh, in particular, just to fix the idea, we have that I intersected I J is equal to the, is empty for the J, which goes from one to N minus one, okay? Because, uh, because of the choice that we, that we make. So basically what we have is that, just to stress that I belongs to the set where we perform the supremum corresponding to the index n minus y. Supremum corresponding to the index n minus y. Okay, then by definition, by consequence, or rather, as a consequence of the definition of the supremum, okay, we can say something about the length of, of I. We have that the length of I is less than okay, n minus 1 which is less, by the choice that we make, two times the length of i n, uh, i n, i n, and that's it. And so I call this, these two uh, inequality uh, with this dot. Okay, now. Okay, now comes the five. <laughs> So now would be clear why I decided to, to choose this five. Okay, now fix uh, uh, the node with yn, the midpoint of this uh, interval in. So let y n the midpoint of uh, uh, i n <laughs> okay and then take take an x point x in i and uh, okay and let in our interval i, then we want to estimate the distance between this x and this y n. So you have that y n minus x. So I remember that i and i n overlap, okay? So just visualize in, in this way. This is less or equal than the length of i plus uh, um, the length of i n divided by 2. And then we use this. This is less or equal than 2 times uh, 
the length of i n plus the length of i n over two. So we clear here. So you end up with this. OK, so what does it mean geometrically? So it means that it means that x belongs uh, to an interval having a midpoint y n, but five times uh, larger than i n. OK, so it means that um, so as we have that the point x uh, belongs to the interval call it jn having the same midpoint yn Okay, the same mid midpoint y n of i n and five times the length. Okay, so in, t in symbol you have that j n is five i n. Okay, so we have. I remember that x was a point in R, so we have that R is contained in the union of n, n plus 1 infinity of Jn. And so at the end, we finally found that the outer measure of R, which is the difference between E and this finite uh, uh, sequence of uh, disjoint intervals, is less or equal than this is five, ta five times the length, the sum of the length of i n which is less than epsilon okay and so we are done May I raise? As a consequence, yes, as a consequence. Okay, now we will state that we state and prove the Lebesgue theorem. which is a consequence of, of this lemma, of course. Um, so there is this, this blackboard. Mm -hmm. OK, so this is a fundamental theorem of this part of the course. It was under the name of Lebesgue theorem. OK, and it tells you that 
you consider it concern <coughs> monotone function. So you have f function which is defined in this closed interval with various values in R. <coughs> so non decreasing function. Okay, then we have that F is differentiable uh, differentiable almost everywhere in the interval A B it means that um, I mean okay you understand what it means but just to be to be uh, precise that there exists the, the derivative exists in almost uh, at almost every almost every every point um, of uh, of a b. Okay. Okay. Then. It, okay, it is uh, it's, it's differentiable. F prime is measurable. And uh, non negative. And moreover, the following inequality holds. You have that the integral, the Lebesgue integral of f prime of t in dt is less or equal than f of b minus f of a. f prime. So you know that it is differ differentiable almost everywhere. So it's okay. So <coughs> just before proceeding with the proof, which is still quite hard <laughs> today, so can you can you provide an example? Uh, so the answer is: Is it really needed the strict the inequality, or we can just put the equality? Can you provide an example of a function for which um, this is verified with a strict inequality? A function with a jump, no? For instance, this is what you. For instance, if you have. Uh, I call it with h, which is uh, usually is known as the heavy side function. Just define it in minus one one, which values in R. Uh, okay, so you have that. The so okay, the function is defined like this. You have this is equal to one here, and equal to uh, this is minus one. Here, okay. The, the important thing is that he has a jump. That ha must have a jump. So of course you have that is constant almost everywhere, okay. And so f prime is zero almost everywhere, but you have that h. Okay, put it in uh, one and uh, minus one in this interval. So you have that h1 is equal to 1, h minus 1 is equal to minus 1, so the difference is 2. So you have that uh, minus 1, 1 of h prime, this is 0, and this is strictly less than h1 minus h minus 1, um, which is uh, 2. 
okay okay but but this is um, you can uh, object that this this um, non continuous function there's a jump so if we if we look is there a, I mean another counterexample of the fact that inequality might holds with a strict sign within the continuous function within the class of more regular function for instance continuous function So we saw the example of a function which has many interesting properties, which is continuous, which is uh, constant almost everywhere, but is increasing. The counter function, the counter function. <laughs> so this is another, familiar, this is an example. So exam another example is. Uh, counter function, so uh, the counter function f okay, it was defined in uh, uh, 0, 1 in uh, 0, 1 if you remember it was uh, takes the value 0 in 0 takes the values 1 in 1 was increasing and we have that it was constant almost everywhere. So f prime of uh, the counter function was 0 almost everywhere in, um, in 0, 1. But it was, it is also continuous. So f, the counter function is continuous because if you remember, we constructed it as um, a uniform limit of continuous, uh, of, of continuous function. And so you have that also in that, in that case, you have that 0, 1, this is 0, and so this is less than um, f1 minus f0, which was 1, which is 1. So you have the strict sign. Okay. Okay, now we need to introduce a set of, um, of four derivatives, which are called Dini derivatives. Okay, so, uh, okay, I will, with d plus, with the plus on the top of f of x uh, is the uh, limb soup of h, as h tends to uh, 0 plus of fx plus h of the uh, incremental quotient um, minus fx divided by h, then I take the minus, so here you have the lim inf, no, sorry, again the lim sup, but h, uh, uh, you reverse the order here. So one is performed from the left, the other from the right. Uh, then you have d with the plus on the bottom, f of x is the limit as h tends to 0 plus of uh, the same kind of fx plus h minus uh, divided by h, and at the end you have the d minus of f of x uh, is equal to the limit f h goes to 0 plus of u reverse minus f x plus h divided by h.
Okay, uh, okay, of course, we, we say that uh, the derivative exists when these four numbers exist, are finite, and they coincide, okay? Okay, so uh, f prime uh, of x exists if these four quantities These four Dini derivatives uh, are finite, and uh, and they must coincide. Okay, and they coincide. Okay, so now we are interested in um, in, uh, in investigating when when they coincide. Okay, what you can, for instance, you can, an, uh, an inequality which came uh, straightforward is, uh, for instance, the fact that this lim sup is always larger or equal than this lim inf. So you have that d plus of f of x is larger or equal than uh, d plus of f of x and analogous way you have that this t minus of f of x is larger or equal than t minus of f of x. Okay, now we prove, we start to prove the Lebesgue theorem. So we will <sighs> Okay, so to somehow um, so we want to prove that our function f is differentiable. So this means to prove that the set where any two of these four quantities um, uh, do not coincide has measure zero, okay? So for instance, uh, uh, okay, we, we just will select two of them and we prove for two of them and then the for the other is completely, is completely analogous, okay? Okay, so um, okay, so for instance, just to fix the idea, consider uh, consider uh, d d plus f and d minus f. Okay, now we want to prove, we want to prove the following, to prove that this inequality is satisfied almost everywhere, that, okay, d plus f is uh, less or equal than d minus f almost everywhere in, uh, in AB. So we prove this, uh, to prove the reverse is analogous, okay, is analogous, you just have to, to exchange the role of the two, but it's analogous. And then the same holds true for, for all the other, uh, for all the other couple, okay. Okay.
Okay, so we want to uh, to introduce this set A as the set of X in A B. such that the converse is true, so such that d plus f is strictly uh, larger than d minus f. So, and the claim is um, to prove that this claim is that the measure of a is, is zero, okay? Um, I mean, actually, okay, actually this is not correct. So in the sense that we, uh, we still do not know if, uh, if the set A is, um, is measurable because, uh, because when we define, so when we define the, um, the Dini derivative, we use uh, uh, uncountable operation, okay? So we are not sure that doing uncount the uncountable limit now, which because h tends to zero is not a longer sequ uh, sequence. So we are not sure actually now that this is a measurable set. Okay, but this is not important. So um, we, we want uh, to, um, to express this set uh, by means of a countable union of um, more nice set, if you want. So we want to express this set here as in this way, as the union of when you have two quantities V and U with values uh, among the, the rational number and such that U is less than V, Okay, and we have that this set is like this. And we have that this is d plus of f is larger than v, larger than u, larger than d minus of f. Okay, just uh, uh, call a set of this type E okay and now wh what we want to do now is that if we define with F with S uh, the outer measure of, uh, of E because we still don't know that even E is not uh, might not be measurable we want to prove, we want to see that S is zero. Okay, this is, this will be our purpose now, okay? Okay, so we, sorry, excuse me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Think at a fixed V and U. Just, just fix it. Uh, we, we just now we, we focus on a set of this type. Just think. Okay. Uh, okay. So, uh, okay. As usual, now we we have this set E, and we know that uh, there exists uh, an open set U, open, uh, such that you have that U contains E. And um, and you have uh, such that um, okay for any epsilon positive of course such that the measure of u of this open set is bounded by the outer measure of v so uh, plus epsilon okay so s plus epsilon 
ok then fix a point take D a point in E and consider this collection of intervals which I call uh, I which has which uh, have this form so they are uh, C D D I mean I stress that D belongs to E and you have that this closed interval are contained in, in the open set and such that we have the following inequality so you have that uh, FD minus FC divided by T minus C is less than U than this uh, U here okay okay so now uh, mm, you understand what we want to to use we want to prove that this this uh, collection i is a vitalic covering for e okay so we have that uh, i is a uh, vitali covering for e so why So this is somehow comes from the definition of, uh, uh, from this fact. <laughs> and uh, the definition of limits actually. So, okay, uh, in fact, uh, fix a point uh, x in E and uh, an arbitrary and some and some eta uh, positive, okay? Okay, then by definition of Liminf so it's here this way definition of the means we have that there is some C such that if C is in between D minus eta less than C less than D this is C is less than D uh, the quotient okay such that we have that residue such that uh, we have that FD, this quotient, the quotient in the definition is less than U, okay? The lines are eh? C is in between D minus e, eta and, and D, okay? Uh, the point C is in uh, is in U, okay? Okay. So basically, we we have that the interval I defined as C D is uh, is what we are looking for is the one that comes in the definition of Vitali covering. Because of course, but okay. Because this is trivial. Because D, uh, our uh, D is in 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 I, uh, and the length of I is less than than eta. Okay, and then if uh, you this you uh, this you. Uh, yeah, because uh, no, not uh, <laughs> because I use uh, this is a uh, capital U is uh, the notion the notation for for the open. This is the the um, yeah uh, the, the small U. Okay. 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 So what I want. Okay, and then if you if you take C sufficiently close to D, you have that if C is sufficiently 
close to D, to D, then you also have that CD is contained in, in U. So indeed, we are within this, uh, this collection here, and this, this capital J provides a vitalic covering for you. OK, now, uh, now we can apply the, the lemma, the Vitali lemma, because we did all this effort <laughs> to prove it. So we can apply the Vitali lemma. So we have that by uh, the Vitali lemma, uh, we know that there exists a finite sequence of this joint interval. There exists a sequence that they have in this specific case, yes, they have this form, C1, D1, C um, capital N, Dn are in, in J, uh, okay, disjoint, uh, uh, okay, interval, <laughs> such that they almost cover E in the sense that E minus the reunion is less than epsilon. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Now we want to sum up this uh, this gap uh, over uh, over the index uh, i. Okay. So we consider this sum. This is a finite sum uh, of f the i minus f. Ci, so this is less than u or u i one n of uh, uh, so di i minus ci. Okay, I recall you that they are disjoint. No, so this is equal to u the measure of the, the union. Uh, okay, C i d i i one two n, and this is less or equal than than u, the measure of uh, big U in the sense that, and this is less than u times s plus epsilon. Call this uh, first uh, uh, bound one. Okay. Okay. Now we want to use to evaluate the outer measure of e by using subadditivity. Okay, so we have that S. Okay, by definition is the outer measure of V. Okay, now we want to split E into, into two sets. The one is uh, the one ap appearing here, so this is less or equal than M star than E minus this finite union. plus uh, what remains, uh, so the intersection plus m star of E intersected this. OK. OK, this is less or equal than epsilon plus this. I repeat this. E intersected so basically we have that for the moment we found that S 
minus, minus epsilon is less than the outer measure of E intersection uh, this finite union. Okay, now somehow we want to uh, to repeat the same argument of before within this uh, this integral this uh, interval c i and and d i. Okay, and uh, okay. Okay, so the idea is that we, okay, we, so we define E i as E intersected, okay, you can just fix uh, uh, one of these C i, D i. Uh, okay, in this way you can, uh, Ah, uh, sorry, here. Okay, from this, uh, we have that that you have the i from 1 to n and star of e i is larger than s minus call this dot. This comes from there, okay? Because we proved that this is less or equal than the sum of m star of, of e i. Okay? Okay, so we, we basically we argue as before, but uh, um, now E i plays the role of E uh, of, of the argument before. So again, so we can claim that uh, uh, we have that there exists an open interval U i. So it depends on, on the index, of course, uh, such that you have that um, C i d i is contained in U i, which is which contains E, and such that uh, the measure of U i is less than m star of E i plus. Now I prefer to take epsilon divided by n. In any case, it's an arbitrary small. Uh, number, okay. Okay, if this is not true, uh, I just consider CIDI intersection UI, okay? We just replace. Okay, uh, so consider <coughs> take an e, e, e i and then define this collection of i in this way. So you have E uh, H um, such that E H is contained in this U i. So I'm dealing in analogous way. E is in E i and such that I consider the reverse inequality F h minus F e divided h minus e is larger than than v. Th this v was the number which is involved in the countable union that I, I started right from the, the beginning of the proof, okay? Okay, uh, arguing as before, you can prove that i is a vitalic covering for, is a vitalic covering 
for EI. Ok, so by the lemma of Vitali, by the Vitali lemma, we can select a finite, we can find a finite number of disjoint intervals such that we have that there exists of, of this type. Uh, e, I use the index uh, uh, okay, E1, uh, H1, until EM, HM, uh, okay, disjoint. Okay, uh, such that uh, the outer measure of EI minus this finite union is less than epsilon divided by, by n. Okay, so this finite union j goes from 1 to m of this ej h j is less than epsilon divided by n. And call it, uh, with, uh, denote it with these two dot. And uh, so we know that these this, this intervals belong to this collection, so they, they verify this inequality, so we will uh, use it. Okay, just let me... Uh, um, Okay, so consider f h j minus f uh, e j, j goes from 1 to m, is larger than equal to b, uh, sum of uh, uh, h h j minus e j. Okay, this is larger or equal than Okay, this is larger or equal than V times M star minus EI minus epsilon divided by N. Okay, why? Because this is because M star of EI. So basically you argue as before, no? Is uh, less or equal than M star of uh, the sum of two sets. The one is the one appearing here. J. And then you have the sum So this is less or equal than uh, epsilon divided, uh, so divided by n uh, minus uh, plus this. this, okay? Sorry. Okay, you, you understand. J intersected this E, J. Of e, J intersection, E, J, H, J. Okay. Okay, now we want to, to write explicitly this sum to understand how, how it behaves. So this sum is Hm minus Fem plus Hm uh, minus 1. 
minus f uh, em minus 1, ok, no, blah, blah, blah. you have f h1 minus f e1, this is less or equal. <laughs> so we have that all these terms, so because so far we did not use the fact that f is uh, non-decreasing, no? Now we use the fact that f is non-decreasing and we can say that this is negative. This all these terms is negative. <laughs> And so you have that at the end, you have that this is Hm minus Fe1, which is less or equal than Fbi minus Fci, because you have that Hm is smaller than the i is contained, and E1 is larger than uh, C. This is a C, Ci. And Ci. Okay, now we consider this difference. So you have that f di minus f ci is f is non decreases is larger than f h j minus f e j larger or equal than v h j minus e j. These are all sum from j goes from one to m j goes from 1 to m, larger or equal than v times uh, m star of e i minus epsilon divided by n. Or if we combine the two inequalities, We have, and we sum up, uh, we have f di minus f. This times is i goes from 1 to n. Is larger or equal than v times the sum of the measure, the outer measure of e i minus epsilon. Is larger or equal than, this is by dot, than v s minus 2 epsilon. Oh, okay, and finally, by 1, we have that uh, u is s plus epsilon is larger than v s minus 2 epsilon. Epsilon is, uh, is, uh, is uh, arbitrary small, so this must hold for any epsilon positive. So here tells you that u times s must be larger or equal than uh, uh, v times s. But uh, if s is, uh, is different uh, from 0, you get that u, if you assume that if s is different from 0, you would lead that you would have that u is larger or equal than d, which is a contradiction because we start by another hypothesis. So, so this is this is a contradiction. So we had that indeed s must be zero. So and this concludes at least the first part. So what we prove is that d plus f is less or equal than d minus f almost everywhere uh, in AB. So the next time we will conclude the proof, okay? So it's not, for today I think we can stop here.